guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've been stitching because today we're going to add embroidery, beads, buttons and we're going to embellish our little wonky houses. Welcome back. So while we were away, you should have done your stitching. This is my stitching that I did last time and today I'm going to make this come alive with some simple embroidery stitches. I've got all these lovely things laid out on my mat here. I've got some little buttons, I've got some sequins, some even smaller sequins, a few beads and I've got just some ordinary DMC stranded embroidery silks. There are other things you can use as well, there's tiny little flowers here and there's also huge buttons. Don't be frightened to use a huge button on your work. It works. I don't know why, they're wonky houses and the fact that you've got something larger there, it just seems to work with it. So let's get going with the stitching. So I've got my threaded needle and what I've got in here is I've got two strands of a green DMC stranded thread and I'm going to do some simple stitching on here, nothing complicated. I'm going to come up through my fabric and I'm just going to take some straight stitches that are slightly longer than the black stitches that are already there and it's almost like I'm just adding the green to the grass and I'm just simply popping them up and down they can go over the black as well don't worry make them taller and once I've got those in I'm going to come across to my house and I'm going to add a few pieces in on my house to try and soften the bottom of the house so here's my grass going in and you just take your time popping in a few bits and pieces. Now, while I've got that thread on here, you could add some detail to your window. Has my wonky house got a window frame? Well, it has if I put a very simple straight stitch around it, and then I give it its window frame. Let me move my hands round. Hopefully you can see that. And you don't have to go around all of the sides of the window. I might only decide to pop it on three sides. Now while I've still got the green in, I'm also going to put the apex of the roof in. So again, another straight stitch. Lay your stitch along the apex of the roof, around that triangle, and pop in a few straight stitches. And can you see how it's bringing that alive? It's softening it, but it's giving it some character as well. Now, I'm going to add some sequins to this. So what you do is you fasten off on the back because later on, when you decide what you're going to do with these little pieces, you will neaten the back. So we can cut that off. And now I need to put my sequins on. So you will need for that a beading needle with a beading threading. So here's my selection of sequins. You can pick up a sequin on these long pieces of grass that you put in with the green thread. You can come through the middle of the sequin. Let me just get that in the right place. Pick up a seed bead, slide that down, and then the seed bead becomes the stop but also the flower center. So move the seed bead out the way, go back down through the sequin, pull through, and the bead holds the sequin onto your piece of work. Come back over here on this piece of grass, pick up a slightly different sequin. I've got some little orange ones here, so pick that one up. Also pick a bead up as well. Slide them down, miss the bead and go through the hole in the sequin. And you can put little tiny flowers into your work as well. You see how that's beginning to make that look so pretty. There we go, more going on. Miss the seed bead and go through the hole in the sequin. Now, we want some bigger things on there. So what about a great big button? Well, it's not a great big button, but it's a bigger button than the sequins. So here's a nice orange bead. I'm gonna pop that, well, it's, and I can get my needle through. I call it a bead, but it's a button, but it looks like a bead. It's, it's just, look at that, look, that looks really lovely. And again, you can add lots of little beads on as well. So you don't have to stick to the embroidery stitches. You can pick up just one bead after another 
and pop those on down the bottom so they are the tiny tiny little flowers that are at the bottom of the border in the garden but they just add a bit of colour see how that's picking that up and making that look lovely look at that that's coming along really nicely now when you get to this point you can go as long as you want you can embellish till your heart's desired but I've got some I'm going to show you here this is one I'm working on and you can see that I've done the straight stitches on the apex of the roof there the little straight which is um, stitches around the window but I put some French knots on this one because when I was wonky in my stitches on and off of the house here I came across to get to the other house and I put a tree in so my tree needs blossom on it so I've put French knots here but you could sew on some of these lovely little beads as well I've got another one here Look at all the lovely French knots through here and my sequins and bigger buttons here and a nice big button here. Down here we've got roses growing around the doorway and we've got primulas growing in the garden. So it's lovely to be able to embroider these and they look so different from when you originally did them with just the black outline. Really bringing them together. So on this one I'm going to add some French knots. So again in my needle I've already threaded it. I've got three strands of the red DMC thread and I'm going to put some little clusters of French knots on the ends of this vine that's growing up and down my um, house. So I come through with a needle. I then tend to pop my work flat on the surface. Hold the thread that's coming out of the work. Take the needle to it and wrap the thread round it several times. Now these are called cheats French knots because we're going to go around them more than once. Pop the needle down, hold the thread there to the side and pull through carefully. Hang on a minute. There we go. Pull the thread up nice and slowly and you get a little blip on the surface. So to recap on that, come up through the fabric, pop it down flat take the needle back, wrap it round the thread as many times as you want, pop the tip of the needle back in, pull back on this thread slightly and push the little coils down with your finger, pop the needle through to the back and pull through and you get another little cheats French knot and you keep doing that, you get quite fast at it and you can see quite quickly that you can actually pop lots of little flowers onto your piece of work. Bring them down a bit lower here. When you get used to it, you can do them without popping it down on the surface. But um, can you see how that's going? It's looking quite nice, isn't it? Get your fingers in the right place. There you go. I'll bring one more down here. Now whilst I've got the red on there, I could actually put detail to my door on as well, which will then pick up the red of the flowers and the red roof as well. And they are just simple straight stitches. There you go, look at that, that's looking really lovely. If I wanted to, rather than waste the thread that's on here, I can even put a little bit of red round my windows as a window frame. And then that red is picking up throughout that little house with the roof and the plants and the details to the door and the window. When you've got enough on there, turn over, just finish your stitches in the back and cut off. And look at that, that's looking lovely. So you can see very quickly how easy it is to build up quite an arrangement of floral um, sort of embellishments along the bottom of your house, a few little flowers and very, very, very simple hand stitching. So what you now need to do guys, is you now need to take that piece of work that you embroidered last week and you need to start embroidering it by hand this week. Machine stitch has been done and now you're going to put in the extra element and bring things forward. 
Once you've done all your hand embroidery, you can start to assemble your little pieces all together. And you can make little panels, you can make little panels with little bits that come off the edge. And next week, if you join me, we're going to come back and we're going to look at how to make all these lovely extra pieces to go on top which can also be turned into beautiful little gifts and brooches which you can give to your friends and family. So don't forget to come and join me on the next video. Well there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed doing that little bit of embroidery on your wonky houses. If you've enjoyed this video please subscribe for free by pressing the red button and the bell below. Don't forget if you're interested you can buy a starter kit from my website. Thank you.